Drew Glover will be speaking next. Uh, he went to Harbor High and Cabrillo College. Um, he is the executive director of the project Pollinate to uh, get the city to stop using glyphosate and Roundup for weed abatement. He is a staff member at the research, uh, Resource Center for Nonviolence, a candidate for city council. And a friend, an activist, and a neighbor. Welcome. Thank you. Whoa. Hey. So, thank you, everyone. I'll make this really quick. Um, I really appreciate all of the organizing and effort that went into this event, and all of you to come out on this evening to stand in support with the 21 youth that are standing up against the federal government, which is daunting and intense, but uh, honorable at the same time. I do want to take a second. Xander, was it? Yeah. yeah. I also want to be an astronaut, so just put it out there. Uh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> It'd be hard not to want to be an astronaut. Um, so also, I'm the president of the United Nations Association, and it, that's the first time I've ever heard Project Pollinate uh, referred to as the Project Pollinate, but it's a great opportunity um, for us to address city issues around pesticide uh, reform and getting glyphosate out of our systems. But also, uh, as the president of the United Nations Association, it's important to bring up the idea of refugees. So who here has ever heard of an environmental refugee? Yes, now did you know that they don't have the same rights as normal refugees, quote unquote normal refugees, which is really intense. And it's if you want to go and look at the UN um, specification and definition, definition of environmental refugees, it's kind of disconcerting, especially with the understanding that climate change uh, will impact so many different people and will create such a wave of environmental refugees that are going to need support from neighboring countries and the wealthy people of the world. Um, another thing with that too is the Samoan Islands, for example. Did you know, all know that they're under threat from climate change? It's pretty intense. The Prime Minister of Samoa has called climate change an existential threat for all of our Pacific family and said that any world leader who denied climate change uh, should be taken to a mental hospital. Yeah. So, hey, uh, it's pretty intense with regards to the weather patterns that are changing, impacting places like Puerto Rico and the rebuild effort that needs to go in there. And it's the voice of the youth that are going to make a serious impact on what's going on, which is why it's so important that this is happening uh, going on. And I love the fact that the movement shows the fierce urgency of now quote from Dr. King. I work at the Resource Center for Nonviolence. and. There's so much that can be learned from nonviolent resistance. I really love Danny for bringing up the concept of nonviolent resistance and how much power it has over the violent alternative. And it's important that in our work through this process of resistance against the federal government that we stand strong in the corner of nonviolence because as soon as we become violent, it gives them a tool <clears throat> to work against us. Call us all kinds of crazy names and destroy things. Thank you, yes, absolutely. Um, so another thing that Dr. King says, we need a radical revolution of values. And so that's not just on the federal level, but it's also at home uh, here, uh, working in a grassroots capacity, engaging with people about what's going on. And just with that as well, I'm also the chair of the Santa Cruz County Poor People's Campaign, which is run through the Resource Center for Nonviolence. And it is an organization or an organizing group that brings people together across race, uh, partisan and religious lines to address issues of environmental devastation, as well as the war economy and systemic um, uh, racism. So everything is interconnected. It's something that we really want to emphasize uh, and the importance of working together uh, and across kind of different lines. And just with this idea of standing up against power, there's a great quote that I always turn to from Frederick Douglass that says, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. So vote in November and make the change happen together.